scratch that one too. Man, way to ruin Chimpy. Okay, you uh made a mistake here. You wrote Batman twice. Yeah, that's intentional. Number three is Golden Age Batman, and number four is Post Crisis Batman. They're like two completely different Batman. <sighs> okay, so that just leaves. Pomp and Circuitry is the 10th episode of season 4. It first aired on September 19th, 2010, and was written by Jackson Public. In it, Phantom Limb escapes Guild of Calamitous intent custody and proposes a team up with Richard Impossible. Meanwhile, Hank attempts to enlist in Sphinx, and Dean and his father pay a visit to State University. <laughs> Regarding the career drifter, Hank says, Plus you get paid to just walk around all day reading sexy letters. Like the guy in Red Shoe Diaries. He wasn't a drifter. The Red Shoe Diaries was an anthology series in which a character played by David Duchovny would introduce a new erotic story each week. Dr. Venture says that Hank and Dean have been around the world more times than Gate and Dugas. Gate and Dugas was a gay flight attendant who for many years was believed to be patient zero of the AIDS crisis in the United States. And to this, Billy responds that the learning beds are teaching material more dated than Funk and Wagnalls. Funk and Wagnalls was a publisher of reference books that published their last encyclopedia in 1997. In his frustration, Brock wonders where the rookie was trained. Where'd you recruit this clown anyways? The Albert Merrill School? The Albert Merrill School is a computer technical school located in New York City. Well, here it is, the Albert Merrill School. I'm not typically in the business of explaining jokes, but this is a pretty easy one to miss. The dean says... Yes, I see your confusion, but no, I'm afraid it's my title, not my name. Oh. Clearly, just before the scene started, Dean Venture excitedly pointed out that they had the same name. <laughs> Phantom Lim looks at this picture and later references that he and Professor Impossible were in the Boys Brigade together. The first time we saw this picture and learned of the Boys Brigade was back in Now Museum, Now You Don't. The outfit Hank chooses to wear when running away to join Sphinx is the spy outfit he put together way back in Season 1's Ice Station Impossible. Nice spy clothes, douche. What? I didn't have any black. I figured, cowboy, next best thing to spies, right? This is the first appearance of Phineas Phage, a supervillain whose design is based on a virus and whose name is based on Phineas Gage, a man who accidentally drove a metal bar through his brain in a construction accident and survived. Another first appearance, The Rookie, that Brock gets paired up with in this episode. I won't go into detail, but if this is your first time watching the series, keep this in mind. And one last first appearance in this episode goes to the Investors, or as they're referred to in this episode, the General Consolidated Insurance Company. We'll find out more about them later, but what we do know is that they have something to do with the check that Billy and Pete received back in Handsome Ransom. Roy Brisby, the Walt Disney analog, makes an appearance in this episode. He's appeared randomly throughout the show in various crowd scenes, but this is his first speaking part since Season 1's The Incredible Mr. Brisby. The dean of the college references the fact that Dr. Venture blew up the science wing back when he was in college. We, the audience, know that it was actually the monarch who was responsible for blowing up the science wing. The Sovereign mentions his predecessor, Force Majeure. For the longest time, I didn't know if Force Majeure was a punny name of a dude, or if he was actually talking about the concept of force majeure, a French phrase meaning a superior power that's used to describe situations in which an extraordinary circumstance prevents something from happening. You know, if you asked me to list out my top 10 favorite episodes, I don't think Pomp and Circuitry would spring to mind, but God damn it, this is a great episode. My only real gripe with this episode is simultaneously something I really like about this episode, by which I mean Phantom Limb's mental state. I've always liked Phantom Limb as an actually competent and calculating bad guy, so I'm happy for his return to form in this episode. But at the same time, what the hell happened to him being crazy? Was him being crazy an elaborate ruse the whole time? Or did he actually go crazy but the guild has a great mental health program for their prisoners? Or maybe some third option. Also, when the heck did he have time to shit on the floor? But anyway, aside from my issues with the greater mental health of Phantom Limb canon, this episode has every ingredient that makes for a perfect episode of the Venture Brothers. Action, comedy, and world building. So let's talk about them one at a time. Lim is a badass in this episode. His escape from the guild is one of my favorite action scenes in the whole series, and it's only the first of three action scenes he'll have. And forget about Lim for a second because the same episode also features a montage of Hank at his awesomest. As far as the comedy, it's sprinkled throughout, but the Billy Quizboy as guidance counselor scene is a definite standout. And as far as world building, holy crap, this episode is chock-a-block with world building. 
You've got the rookie showing up for the first time, which will pay off later. You've got the investor showing up for the first time. And you've got Richard Impossible, Baron Underbite, and Phantom Limb coming together to form the Revenge Society, which is one of my all-time favorite storylines in all of the Ventureverse. Turns out I love Pomp and Circuitry, and I love the Venture Brothers. As always, thank you for watching, and go Team Venture. Tune in next week for Any Which Way But Zeus. If you dug this video, share it with a friend. And if there was some huge glaring thing that I missed in this video, follow me on Instagram at VentureVerseGuide to see these videos a week early and offer your input before I upload the final product.